in this video I'm just gonna let you know everything that I have been playing lately and I am going to be brutally honest about all of the games. This video is sponsored by Epic Games, thank you. And you know what, if a game is bad I'm gonna let you know because there has been a lot of games dropped lately, some better than others. Now in this video I'm going to talk about Silent Hope, Rune Factory 3, Starfield, Fey Farm, Forspoken and the newest Dragon Quest Monsters uh, demo. Enjoy. Okay. You know I am a big fan of Rune Factory, absolutely, but I have to say that Rune Factory 5 is by far the best one and by far my favorite Rune Factory game. Now, Rune Factory 3 is a remake of an old DS game and this shows very much. You can kind of feel that. They did sort of the same thing that they did when they remade Rune Factory 4, kind of stretching the pixels. They did a okay job, probably but I think they could have done it better. And also, I think it's a very difficult game, hard game. I am dying a lot and I am not hooked and I'm not feeling it. But I do believe, I do believe that this game was really good back in the day on the DS. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that maybe it's not completely holding up to today's standards. And that is my honest opinion. It's a game that I would recommend to everyone that is a fan, a diehard fan of Rune Factory, hello, like me. So it's a game that I will sometimes dip into, but I have a feeling that I will not finish this game. I have a feeling. Also, there are so many other games right now. So. If you are on the fence, I mean, I would say maybe wait for a sale on that one. Now, before we talk about Silent Hope, this video is sponsored by Epic Games. This is the second package we are gonna open together. We have some more evidence. We have a map, a new letter. I would like to attract your attention to two files, amongst the others regarding the unsolved murders of Bright Falls residents, Ted Lane and Wendy Davis. A car key was recovered from the location of Davis's murder. I want you to study these files with extreme care and make use... That's my cat in the background, by the way. <laughs> Cauldron Lake. <laughs> Where's the old deer diner? You're not going in for evidence. This looks like my car key. Did I do this murder? No, I have an alibi. Homicide. Oh my god. Ted Lane. Multiple stab wounds to chest area and significant bruising on wrists. Lane's body was found in watery woods. That's terrible. He was also submerged underwater for a lengthy period of time before being buried. That is weird, isn't it? Now the second... Wait. <laughs> now the second murder. Wendy Davis. Cause of death, drowning. With lung, heart and liver missing. And she was found at the bed of Cauldron Lake. <gasps> Are you guys seeing this? The key is the key. Here's the key. <gasps> there is something on the keys as well. There are two arrows. That's definitely a clue. I found something else. There is an arrow in the box. Hidden envelope. Oh my god. Don't tell anyone about this letter. I was risking my life just writing this, let alone sneaking it into the box. You were chosen. Don't think it is a coincidence. You're working on something as heavy as the Bright Falls case from day one. There is a picture in the envelope. You may have seen something like it before when you close your eyes. When you close your eyes? Read between the lines. It's a mask. Guys, I think I'm gonna need your help. Like, why were they drowned before they were buried? And who wrote that letter? Like, who? I wanna know what you guys make of this. You can still pre-order Alan Wake 2 with a link in my description. Now I will be unboxing my final case file in the next video. Maybe we will even get to the bottom of this case. Thank you so much Epic Games for sponsoring this video. Now when it comes to Silent Hope, brand new game, marvelous game. Marvelous is known for Story of Seasons and Rune Factory, like we just talked about Rune Factory. And you can see that because there are woolies and also the same design of the cows in Silent Hope. So there are some cross references that are fun to see. Silent Hope is not a bad game. 
It's a game about these seven chosen ones, I think. They all have their profession and their fighting style. This is an action RPG, ARPG, top-down hack and slash dungeon crawler -y sort of game, isometric. And all of these characters you can individually level up, individually give equipment to, and switch between. They all have their different unique playstyle. Also, when you're down in the dungeons, which means actual underground, it will make sense when you play it. There are places in the levels where you can switch out to another character. You can only control one character at a time. And also you are progressing downwards, reaching checkpoint after checkpoint, which you can fast travel to later. Also, you can go up to the surface where you can do some synthesizing, some cooking, making equipment, because all of these characters that you are also playing, they have their own little stalls. And this is where I see people mention that it it reminds us of a mobile game because you have to wait for the items to be done. I mean, you can go down into the dungeon while you're waiting, but it is very simplistic so far, in my opinion. I mean, the combat feels good. You get access to skills and you get access to them pretty quickly. All of the characters has unique skills and they feel good. The combat feels good. The enemies are okay, but I think what could potentially make this game not the best is that it has a huge potential for being repetitive if I explain that correctly. It has the tendency to be repetitive. I'm gonna say wait for a sale on this game. It's not bad but I don't know if it's worth picking up right now necessarily. But yeah that one is also a wait for sale. Now, what I am actually playing every day. There are two games actually that I'm playing every day right now. <laughs> I'm still playing Fay Farm, still not completely done with everything. You know what? There are so many things to collect in Fay Farm. If you watched my video about Fay Farm, I don't think I realized at that point how many collectibles there are. Have you seen how many flowers there are in Fay Farm? I mean, there are Facebook groups. All they talk about is how to crossbreed all of the flowers. There are a ton. Also cooking. Tiny House is really into the cooking, she said. I don't know if she's... Yeah, yeah, she's done with Fay Farm by now. People are crazy about Fay Farm still. Even my flight attendant when I was going to Los Angeles, which you can see in my previous video, my flight attendant had a switch for her breaks on the 10 hour flight. She also played Fay Farm. That is so hilarious. Fae Farm, I feel like, is a game that has been doing really good with going out to also the casual gamers and the non-gamers. Fae Farm is really good. I still think that, and I'm playing it on the Switch. And of course it is sharper looking on PC than Switch, of course. But you know what? The performance and graphics, they are acceptable on the Switch. And the gameplay just outshines any blurriness, Switch blurriness. I'm just happy that it is on the Switch because it's a very perfect Switch type of game. Cozy game. Having a blast in Fae Farm. Oh, oh my god, I'm not looking forward to this section. Okay, whatever, I mean. I've been trying to play Starfield. Trying to. You know what, I'm playing Starfield for one reason. And you know, I never said I was excited for Starfield. But I am playing Starfield, at least a tiny bit, just to see what they have been doing instead of taking their time with making the next Elder Scrolls. I just gotta know what they are doing with their time. And... <clears throat> I don't like Starfield, not really. It has not hooked me. I found traveling with my ship really difficult. I had to Google how to travel with my ship. So there was something obviously wrong with the controls or the game explaining how to control your ship. I had the hardest time. I don't think the menus are very user-friendly either. I kinda like the skill point system. I don't like all of the loading screens. I can now see what people kinda meant when they said it was a loading screen simulator. I am feeling that it is a Bethesda game somewhat because you can still pick up your corpses. <laughs> 
and dangled them around. I had to do that. If you have played like Skyrim a lot, there are small details that you will recognize that tells you that this is a Bethesda game. My conclusion of Starfield, it's a game and that is all it is. It's not hooking me, it's not exciting for me. I wish it was and maybe I haven't played it until the point where it's supposed to be good because some people said it's gonna be good the further into the game that you get but I don't have the time for that or the patience. If you have Game Pass, try it. But I would say skip if you're planning on buying it. Okay, so here's a section of the video that everyone is going to skip because I'm gonna tell you that I have played and finished the Forspoken DLC now, which is called In Tanta We Trust. And yes, I loved Forspoken. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a wonderful game. I'm loving the controls, I'm loving the combat, I'm loving the traversal of the land, I like the lore and everything. It's such a fun game and I still stand by that. Now the DLC, it was a time traveling DLC where you travel back in time and meet your mother and your mother doesn't know that you're her daughter. <laughs> and you're kind of saving the world, I'm not gonna spoil it. But I did all of the trophies in the DLC, so I still have my super platinum. I like the DLC, but what I can say is that I felt it was kinda short. I did the entire DLC in two evenings, but I had a wonderful time and I needed to mention that. So I can recommend Intanta We Trust. That was really good, really good. Uh, okay, so last up guys. Yesterday I tried Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince Which is a Dragon Quest spin-off game that's now coming out or is it out? The demo is out right now anyways on the switch and you can download the demo and see for yourself This is a spin-off that is trying to be like Pokemon. You're collecting monsters. Also, there was a game like this on the DS yeah, I actually have it. <laughs> okay, so Dragon Quest Monsters. It's a spin-off, which they revived again. I do believe this was the last game that they did. Anyways, you collect monsters. It feels like Pokemon. You can speed up battles and do auto battles, which is so convenient. And I gotta say, I also like that it has seasons. Changing the seasons makes stuff happen in the environment. Just like in Zelda Oracle of Seasons. You can walk over water when it's winter. You can climb stuff when it's spring. Or was it summer? I can see this game having the potential to have potential. Sometimes the game looks like a Nintendo 64 game. The graphics and performance, they are atrocious. Let's just say it also performs like a Pokemon game, if you know what I mean. But I can see how people could get addicted to this. Because you know, both you and I know that we have been playing games with bad performance and graphics and still enjoyed them. This has happened, but then that means that the gameplay has outshine, shown, outshown the annoyance of the graphics and the performance. It has happened. I can see people seeing this game as a good game. It has the potential to have potential. I'm gonna say that. Anyways, I wanna hear what you guys think about that game and any game in this video also with a comment down below. And I wanna say thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. You know what, uh, join the Discord, link down below to that also. And let's have a discussion on all of the games. I wanna know what you guys are playing too. I will see you later. Yeah. <laughs>